Good evening. This is the first video for this year, and I'd like you to really enjoy it. I'm going to deal with certain factors, and this year I'm going to deal a lot with the book. I'm going to deal a lot with the Bible in a deeper level of the thought. I'm going to deal with the Kabbalion. I'm going to deal with this as well because there's some secrets you need to know that go along with the scripture. It's part of the arts. It's part of the arts. And we have to bring that out. Okay? Also, ones that don't have the book, which I know a lot of individuals don't have the book, Judgment of America and Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of America Future. We need you to get these books because in the next years, uh, 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025, I'm going to talk a lot. And I always remember, 2025 goes into 2026. This is a zeitgeist of time that you need to know about. The zeitgeist of time started in the year 2016, and then go all the way through to the year 2026. It is the soul of what is going to happen in America that's going to spin this wheel for another 400 years. You need to know this. This is a revelation that every person, Christian and non-Christian, Muslim, uh, Buddhist, I don't care what religion you are, and I don't care if you have no religion, this is stuff you need to understand, and as I talk about it, you need to see it front and center. You need to move with it front and center. You need to know this stuff, because some things are going to happen, and you need to be aware of those things. Now, you can get those books on Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. You could get it, but most I tell people, go to Amazon. If you shop at Amazon, you can get it right like that, you know. And uh, you can also get it at the uh, Arthur House, okay? But you need those books because a lot of things I talk about, you need to know that there's a pattern to the, to the Bible and the study of it. This Holy Bible is about America. And I know that you have been taught that this Bible is a book about uh, Egypt, about Israel, or the past. I, I know what you've been taught, okay? And they gave it to you with that because, see, you was in the age of deception. The age of Pisces is the age of deception, okay? And they did not want you to know these truthisms. So they hid these truths from you. That way they can lead you. And we're going to talk about such things as, as the five divine laws that automatically is in one of those deceptions that they did on you. They use what they call the manifest destiny. And you need to know about the manifest destiny from a biblical point of view, not just the United States came up. Why? Who? Who? Why they come up with the manifest destiny? Who was the men that brought this about? Who was these Freemasons? Who was these uh, Knight Templars? Who was these uh, oh, Shriners, etc. That brought have brought this manifest destiny about? You need to know about this stuff, people. See, it's biblical concepts, biblical knowledge that you're not learning in a church. They don't know this kind of stuff. They are not to that level of consciousness. And you may think, well, my preacher, he went to this university, he went to that university, he got this degree, please, whoa, let me tell you something. When it comes to that sacred knowledge, I don't care what university your preacher been to, okay? If he haven't been chosen or brought into that environment, he just don't know. And if he don't know this kind of knowledge, he cannot lead you properly at this particular time of human history. In the dark age, back in the past, they did what they did. They jumped and shot and they had church and, and the anointing, don't get me wrong, the anointing played its part to keep you elevated and keep you going. But you right now, you need the real anointing now. You need the anointing for the time. It's not that their anointing was wrong. No they did what they're supposed to do. But we're moving into this paradigm shift. And to move into this paradigm shift and to move properly, you got to understand when the Bible say the arts. The Bible tell you the arts. And you got to know this now. And this is what, what's happening. And let me get y'all into this area of understanding 
And we get y'all into this area of understanding because this thing is beautiful. And I don't want y'all to think by any means that uh, God ain't signed us up like he did to happen. He done signed it up. And we don't got to see this. But I ain't going to go too far in that. Do you, did you get the memo? Did you get the memo? 2022 to 2023. We're going to talk a lot in the next year about the events that's going to happen in 2022 to 2023. And the question is, did you get the memo? Okay? In other words, have you been opening, have you been opening up to this particular time? Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. 2022 to 2026. Did you get the memo? 2022 to 2023. Now I'm going to read this. Let's go with Isaiah. Let's go with Isaiah. Isaiah 49, 5 to 7. And now said the Lord thought. And we know that we talk about thought now. We show you thought in the Bible. I am thought I am. He's in the Bible. So you need to know this. This time of human history, thought was to come out. Now they never taught you thought was in the Bible. They put thought in the Bible, who was Melchizedek, but they never taught you that. It been in in their dormant for the one to come to bring that forth. Many reasons they haven't taught you that. Certain knowledge they didn't want you to know, and then a certain thing they know, if someone comes to you thought and they got it locked and sealed, then they call teach thought in the Bible, they know that that's a messenger. He's a light, and they know that. See, you can't come, and they got the thing, checks and balances this thing, so you can't come and, and just be talking this in and that way, and they'll say, oh, he nobody. He nobody. But when you come and talk specific things, and they know they done hid it from you, they put checks and balances there. Wait a minute. You ain't anybody. Wait a minute. Oh, he say he there in the book? Let's check him out. Let's do this number thing. See, numbers is a language. It's called tetragrammaton. It's the language of God. Okay, when you start working with that language of God, those individuals out there watching things, they know who you are. They know the world may not know who you are, but they know who you are. And they're not gonna, they kind of like set back. Sometimes some of them out there bother with things, and sometimes they'll set back and see which way you're taking it. See, God got certain peoples on the planet. See, it always have had certain peoples on the planet. It's a thing I had. And I'm going to show you an example of when you cut the light off. And I, 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 I say it like this. You know the thing that they use when you're cooking and they put spaghetti in there? The fungal thing like and the water go out and get in everything and get it set in there. Okay, if you take that same device and you take it and you hold it up and you shine a light through it, you're going to see all these little lights, all these little lights coming out through the holes shining. Okay, that's the way that this world lives, this earth is. If certain light beings come to this earth to do a work for God, okay, and they, they are regular people. They are regular people. They are part of the life. Now, on the other hand, you got others that come to the earth and just live a life, and then you got others come to the earth that's in opposition to those light beings, okay? It's like, it's like a battery. Like, you need, the, you need the positive and you need the negative to make that car or that device uh, come on, okay? The world is the same way, okay? And if you had all light, then everything would be speeding up too fast. And you had all darkness, everything would be misery. So God give you a balance of individuals. It's a balance that come to this planet. And sometimes we'll think, oh, that person is bad and he, he should have never came to the planet. No. He served his purpose. Because we come to this planet to shape ourselves and to be created in the God image that we are. So we're going to have positive and negative forces existing around us. We, ones of light, have to deal with that positive force, that part that's going to keep us from that, the, the bad things, as we say, the things in opposition. And when I say bad, it ain't always like you may see bad. Some of the bad things, you can't even see them. It's like the way we eat. If the word of God said eat this particular way and we decide to eat that particular way and we call ourselves holier than thou, and we don't realize that, hey, look, we ain't obeying the will of God and the commandment of God. So we have to be able to shape these things 
in the word of God, in the knowledge of God, so we'll know what is bad and what is good. Because we are light beings and we are light beings, the ones that are striving to be what God wanted to be. We got to understand to follow these arts and these, this knowledge. Okay. Now, Isaiah 49, 5 to 7. And now said the Lord, thought before me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glory, glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing thought, thy should be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Thought, thy may be my salvation. I want you to hear this. Thought, thy may be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now, when we see this, we understand the possession of, possession of the equinox. We understand that thought come to do a particular work at a particular time of human history. As we revolve, as we go in this procession of the equinox, and we're coming out of this dark age, thought is there to bring the horrors effect to this earth. That means he has to bring someone or uh, uh, bring a messenger to the earth and that messenger is normally what we call the Christ conscious being. Now it don't mean that he is the only one. The Christ energy comes. The Christ energy comes and every individual who are to wear that Christ energy is activated at that time to wear that Christ energy. So when people start talking about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is a code name to the messenger. And that's why they put the name Jesus there. It's a code name to the messenger. Israel is a code name to the messenger. David is a code name to the messenger is to come at a certain time. But you got to remember that that energy from the source, that light from the source is going to be not only in him, although he will be a great light in the midst of it all, it's in the individuals that surround him, individuals all over the world who have to help bring mankind and shape mankind into that level of consciousness that they have to be in so they could go into this new age, the bronze age, then the silver age, then the gold age. So we're moving out of this dark age. So you have what you call a paradigm shift. The government used the term reset. You got to understand what these things mean, a reset. And we got to know that. You got to move from, from, from a, an area where you living, ride, used to be riding horses and buggies and all that other stuff to a time when you got the jet craft, et cetera, and you're going into this telepathic age, this telepathic age. Our, ourselves and our, not only our children, ourselves and our children is going to come into more knowledge. And that's why God permitted the internet, what you call in the cloud, cloud technology. And see, people, when they hear that he's coming in the cloud, they think the clouds of the air. No, them, them initiates that wrote this, they knew the name of the things that we would use at this time. Cloud technology, and when they say in the cloud, that's what they mean. Cloud technology. Also, a deeper level that saw, when they talk about in the cloud, that means you in the acastic knowledge, a deeper level of knowledge. So you're moving out of a dark age into an age of light. That means that you're going to learn a lot more. This technology that we have now is going to be, as time goes on, is going to be fossil. Just like the technology of the past is false. Well, this is going to become false. You're going to keep moving ahead. And people got to understand that. This is not a time where people think that, oh, oh, Jesus is going to come and he's going to grab, take us, catch us in the air, and we're going to be in the clouds and we're going to be ever, 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 ever. No, it has to be interpreted. And I know what you've been taught. I've been taught the same thing as I was coming up. But when I began to let thought come into my life, and shape my life as a messenger 
And these things start being revealed to me. He started teaching me what it really means and not what they saying it means. This is not a literal book, my people, to understand. You cannot literally understand this Holy Bible. It's an esoteric writing. You got to know Peshed, the literal writing. You got to know the uh, uh, Peshed, uh, you got to know Ramus, the uh, esoteric part of it. You got to know Drush, the research. You got to do research, my people. And you got to know Sod, the layers of the secret. This book has layers of the secrets and layers of secrets that you got to understand. And this is very important now to move on out of the dark age into the age of light. You need that knowledge. I'm like a lot. I, I have listened to certain ministers, uh, Cliff O'Dollar, T. D. Jakes, and some of the other boys, and they started their ministry. Some of them started their ministry about 40 years ago, and they was in what we call a dark age. And sometimes certain things they've been so skilled, so skilled in their teaching that some of the stuff that they say, you could see it, see the arts there. But they don't know it. So they could take part of it and they could stimulate you. And boy, it's like, man, it, it, you could hear them and sometimes you don't. But then when they, they, they go to another phase of it, it's broke off. It's like, bam, you gave me all this meat and boom, me all this some goodness. And then it's broke off because they, it's a continuation now. And you have to get in that continuation. That's why I don't knock these guys. I don't say, well, don't know. But they are not the ones, unless they make some adjustments to the arts, they are not the ones that lead you into this next dispensation of time. No, they're not. But I love them. Oh, no, I ain't taken away from them. Because it took them to bring you to this point. It took them to bring you to this point. So don't think I'm coming and beating on my brothers. No, 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 no. Everybody got their job to do, and they was doing their job, and they got more to do. But at the same time, you got to see this other part. This other part that'll take you to that next level. They'll bring you so far, other part that'll take you to this next level. That's like an airline. An airline, some airline that take you to New York, and then you make that transition, then you take another airline to Europe, etc. And see, that's what you got to understand. Everybody got their part. But when a newcomer come and you don't realize what they're coming with, you don't say, well, I don't want to get on that airline and go to that next level. You can't do that. You got to say, hey, look, I got on this ride. I'm getting on this other ride. And I'm taking this thing to the level of consciousness in which God the Almighty wants me to be in. This is all what it's all about. Now, let's, let's go a little further. I don't want to make this lecture long. I want to keep the, these lectures now and this year kind of brief. So I'm going to, sometime, some of the boys I'm going to talk more about, sometimes I'm going to talk less about. So you're going to see that a lot. But anything that I don't take you into will come up on another lecture because this knowledge is broad. But yet it has to be put in such of a way like a meal. You can see it, you can taste it, you can eat it. You can live with it. You will love it. And that's what you have to do. A teacher got to be good at what he do. When you lecture, you got to be good at what you do. You got to know your material. And you got to know your audience. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to connect with my audience such a way that they can learn the hidden knowledge of God that's in that Bible that they have read a lot of their life. And you need that. Very important. Very important. Okay. Now, it tell you about thought. Thought gonna come on the scene. Thought gonna raise uh, uh, Israel. Thought is going to bring forth uh, uh, Jacob. All this stuff, understanding this and what it's all about. And let's deal with this again in six. And he said, he said, it is a light thing. Thought, thy should have be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. See, most people think Israel already been here. Israel have not, people. And I know they tell you and they read these stories to you and, and, and you go back in Constantine time and where and mother went over and did this. You got See, that's why you got to understand the drudge, the research. When you go and understand the research, you know that that Israel over there was been orchestrated. It ain't been what they say it was. They ain't mother. It, it, it's a whole big story. You got to see. I can't do it in one sound bite. You got to go do your research, your trust. And when you start finding out this stuff, just like I had to do, you go find it out. You realize, wait a minute. These are things ain't right. That's not what the Bible say. 
Israel is known as a king. Israel known as a person. Israel was the name in which Jacob uh, Jacob took after uh, thought visited Jacob and he wrestled with, with, with thought in his consciousness, in his mind. Okay? And you got to see these things because they make it Israel as a as a nation over there, and as this and as that, when it have not even formed itself as a nation as of yet. Not the Israel that this Bible is talking about. Now, you can make anything you want to make as an individual. You could go and say, well, we're going to form this place in the Palestine area, and we're going to call it Israel. Okay? And we're going to take the Bible and take it and let it uh, coincide with the Bible. You can do anything you want to do. You got the money, you got the power, you can't. That don't make it right. And see, this is what been happening to our people. They've been doing things, and they've been saying things, and they've been making things happen, but they don't make it right. They made, they formed uh, Constantine time, and before, you had different people that they called messiahs and stuff like that. But they took this, this name, Jesus, this person, Jesus, and they elevated him up to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. If you go and you look at it and study the history, that's when that particular Jesus, there wasn't no Jesus Christ. It wasn't no name Jesus Christ. Jesus is a name a long time to call him. Jesus, son of Mary, Jesus this and that. It was known. Like we have a Louis Jerome Armstrong, a Louis Armstrong. They didn't have their names like that. Okay. And we have to understand that. We got to go back and study the history to know how this thing, how this formulated in our, to our time so we could see. We got to start dissecting this stuff so we could really understand what's going on. See, you need someone who's going to put the time. What the Bible say? Study to show thyself approved. A workman that rightly divide the word of truth. Need not be ashamed. See, there ain't no shame in my game. Because I'm here to tell, to deliver this truth to you. So if I'm here to deliver this truth, I got to know what I'm talking about. I can't come around and just run rhetoric to you and don't know what I'm talking about. When I do the arts, I show you how it works. I don't just, oh, well, just believe. Just believe. No, I ain't into that. No, 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 no. You believe the truth is that God delivered to his messenger and it must apply to be a reality. It must show itself to be a reality. When I talk about thought, and you see thought in the Bible and stuff like that, and I'm talking about thought, but did thought exist before now? Yes. Where the Bible came from? The Bible came from the era of Alexander, Egypt. Well, what, what was the God of the God in Alexander, Egypt? Thought. Thought. See, when you say amen in the Bible, amen, where do amen come from? All the wrong. wrong. And so where did a, amen come from? Out of Egypt. And see, they're not telling you this stuff. They're keeping all the stuff. You know what I mean? Y'all tell them that. They don't need to know that. Yes, they do. These truthism you need to know. Now, I want to get into these names before I go into this lecture because I'm going to cover certain things and definitely some of the arts that deal with this. Okay. Brian E. Foster, Leon James, Roger Oldham, the Neophyte Incorporated, that's Brother Devin, Steve Coleman, Joyce and Robert Cromwell, Adrian Herman, Eldrin Janeiro, uh, Demetrius Change, to, to mirror as Fennel Marcel Gordon, okay? And you know Marcel Gordon, she's the one that do the uh, cooking and et cetera. And you want to hear up and get her back out here because we need, it. We need this, this food understood in this year. Uh, Miss Shirley Oliver, Miss Shirley Oliver is known and we call her, we always call her the mother of the organization. Miss Shirley Oliver, she is a beautiful, good, Lady, and I, I love that to have her connected to this. Uh, Marvin Creek, Marvin Creek, we got uh, Kevin Church, we got Clara Wood, and we got Wesley Cedars. Okay, these are individuals who are part of this organization. They are ones that have sponsored this organization in, in whatever way they can, you know, and they are trying to be the help push yourself. We need more individuals this year. Connect. Come on and connect with us and, and subscribe. Get many people as possible to subscribe. Now, we're going to this next board. Isaiah 49 7. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. Now, we know what Israel is. We go over this all the time. Israel is a code name to Lewis. Now, 
did, did, did this first, this Lewis name just came about when this ministry came? No, this Lewis name always been there. If you go and study about the Merovingians, a, a, a bloodline and stuff, that name Lewis, because they use the term Louis, Louis the Fourteenth, and all this, Clovis and all that. So they knew this name, but you don't learn this kind of stuff in the church because they don't cover this. They don't get into the drush. And you got to know this. You got to know why is Israel and Lewis is the same? Why is Jesus and Lewis is the same? See, Louis the Fourteenth was known as the Sun King. What do that mean? The Christ King. And, and most people don't know that. The Catholic Church, the Cardinals, every time you get a Louis, it has to be the Cardinals will give that, ch that ch child that name Louis. Okay, now what, what example, do they have Louis right in line after each other? No, they don't. Very rare you got this king named Louis and his son with the name Louis. No, this is what they did. When you have a great king and he was great, that next child, that boy child you have, his name will be Louis. And that's how it is. Right now, you got the queen, right now, naming kids. Okay, I think she got four male kids named Louis. Got Louis in the name. I think the last young man, the last baby, his first name is Louis. So they bringing that Louis back because of the timing. They know the timing. They know the timing. And they could bring stuff, and it could throw you off from the real truth if you don't know the real truth. You got to understand this is a difference between the Protestant and the Catholic teaching of this book. It's a difference. The Catholics do not agree with this book. No, no, no. They don't agree with this book. The Catholics do not, and, and the Protestants do. You had, this is why you hear me mention during the time of the Black Lives Matter uh, uh, movement, and they was on the streets of the Capitol or whatever in that area, and Trump came out, and you know when Trump holds this Bible up, in front of the Catholic Church. He was trying to tell the, the, the world that America is ruled by the Protestants and by this book here, not by Catholics. And that's what, I know people don't want to hear that, Catholic don't want it, but that's what he was doing. He was showing that. And it's very important to know because in it, in the Protestant mythology, you had Saul, which was Barack Obama, and others said, well, why would you call him uh, uh, Saul? Barack Obama in mythology. You got to understand the mythology and do your homework. Saul had a family member named Michelle. Barack Obama had a family member named Michelle. Saul was the first king of Israel. Barack Obama was the first uh, uh, black individual, a uh, 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 person of color of, of uh, America. Okay? What did Saul do? Saul gave, instead of taking the money and the, and the stuff that he had power to, to do, uh, dealing with the finance, instead of him taking that and giving it to the people, to spread it out to the people, like God wanted him to, Saul uh, gave it back to the kings, what they call the kingpins. Instead of Barack Obama doing what he wanted to do during the time of the mortgage crisis and et cetera, like he's supposed to do, he gave it back to Wall Street bankers. You see what I'm saying? It's a similarity there. You need to see that similarity. Then you had Saul's son came on the scene, which fit the mythology of Donald Trump. And what was the, the certain things about Saul's son? He could not run the government properly. And after Saul's son, from the mythology, then David came on the scene. I want you to see this connection now. So David came on the scene. So what happened? The Catholic Church didn't respect this and look for the David person or guide them to look for that David person at all. No, no, no. Catholic Church say, hey, look, we could change time and events. So what they did, they changed the time and the events. They put Biden in there. Now, could Biden, did Biden truly uh, should be there? Biden put Biden in there. It fit with the arts. Okay, did they know that particular art? No. They might have knew another one, but that particular art that I showed you, they didn't know that. And they put Biden in there. Now, is Biden going to be able to sustain and build America? No, he will not. He may maintain for a period of time, but he cannot because he's not David. And people don't know this. This is a reality. This book has a reality in it. And you need to know this reality, people. Biden is right there, and the arts got him there. 
Because Donald Trump and, and Donald Trump's spark could not be Biden's spark. Donald Trump had a spark in 2018. Biden had a spark in 2019. So that carried Biden on through. Biden's next spark is not until the next election. I think 2026, 2027. So that means that he got to support himself and what he's trying to do on that one spark, 2019. Okay, and that spark could go for about three years to maintain, but it cannot improve America. You're not going to get no improvement of America under Joe Biden. And I know people don't want to hear that. I don't fool with saying Democrat or Republican. These are people that's in leadership position. Get out of this Democrat and Republican crap, okay? These are leaders. They eat from the same table. And you got to understand that. They eat from the same table, my people. And you need to understand that. Let's go and follow. Now, in this, you're going to see it say, Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom, whom, okay, whom man despises, to him whom the nation adore, or abhor, or abhorred, to a servant of rulers, a king, shall see and arise. Prince, let me, let me get this right. Let me get this right. The Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom nation abhors, to a servant of rulers, kings, shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord thought is faithful and the Holy One of Israel and he shall choose thee. Now what is all this saying? Let's break it down. See, thought is to come on the scene and thought is going to choose Israel, Lewis. Okay, who is Lewis? And you understand the arts. In the mythology, in the mythology, and you can study this, this is an Egyptian mythology. It's a plain drawing, so you can see. In it, when the Dark Age is set, set of Satan, as some call it, when he done rule, his rule is over with, then Horus come. Horus is this Israel. That's who Horus is. Horus is, is the Christ person in heaven. That's who Horus is. He's the Christ person in heaven that is stationary in the heavens. Okay? As they say, he said it on the right hand uh, of God. That means he's stationary. He got a responsibility. Right hand means political power that he had. And this Horus is to hand that throne, that power down to uh, mean I mean, thought is to set it up that he's handed that power down to Israel, okay? And you got to know that, that power to take this thing to the next level. So this Israel character got to become, this Lewis character in the years to come, got to rise up to be a light to the Gentile. Got to rise up to be a light to his own people. That is a responsibility that already encoded in the metric. This thing is already sought up like this. It's already sought up like this. You had Noah down here. You had this dark age. You had Taurus. You had Aries. And you had Pisces there. Now at this time, this is when this, uh, the, the Lord thought is going to set in motion that Israel. So that's why you hear thought being talked about right now. Because Israel, or what we call the Son of Man, have to come on the scene. And this Israel energy, that Israel energy, that Jesus energy, that Jesus spark, have to be here. And not only going to dwell in that particular person, but it's going to dwell into individuals who are lights like him. And they, he just the major light at the time. But there's other individuals with this Christ light in them that will be dwelling at this particular time of human history. And they're going to teach things not controversial to him. They're going to teach the same things in which he teach. It's sought up like that. 
He's a light. He's, his purpose is to come at this particular time of human history to open your eyes to the Lord God thought and open your eyes to where we are at at this particular time of human history. It's very important. You're going to see people see this uh, this sign, this eternal sign, and they don't know really where it comes from. This is where it comes from. If you go this way, go that way, this way, and that. That's where that come from. That's where it come from. This procession of equal knots, it go over and over and over and over again. That's why a lot of time the Egyptologists who's created from the Catholic Church and a lot of these wannabe scholars who were the Catholic Church were created. See, I don't mean, I'm not coming against Catholic peoples in general. I'm coming against something that have been done. Okay, what they have done they have taken this knowledge here and they tell mankind came about 6,000 years ago, da 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 da, and all that other stuff. When mankind always exists, oh, this and always, always existed, okay? But they want to dumb you down to control you, okay? Don't want to tell you the truth isms. And by controlling your educational system, controlling your church system, they got you in this revolving door where you can never learn truthism. And God had to break that. And they did that all in this age of deception in Pisces, okay? Now, but what you're gonna find now, you're gonna find out when you get here, like Noah, them, they talk telepathically. They was telepathic talkers. That's why when you hear them get to the Tower of Bell, you'll see where they talk about, they had scattered their tongue because they were speaking one language. They've got, that's telepathic language, okay? This stuff is a science. This stuff is easy to understand if you know the arts. It's a telepathic language. No of them was talking telepathic language. Notice this very carefully, what the scriptures say now. The scriptures say that mankind had became wicked. What do that mean? That's not literal. So what do that mean? That means that from Noah time, when they were living 120 years, they're going to go into this dark age. When they go into this dark age, this is a time where they call wicked. This is a time what the Egyptian mythology calls Sith time, Satan time, the devil time, where he's going to rule. But what is actually happening scientifically to make this come about? you got to know this area, this area is serious. See, when we're going this way like this, serious is coming this way like that. And when that happens, there's less, there's less illumination to our sun, to our planet. Sirius kick off an energy that illuminates 25 times more than ours. That means this energy, this knowledge, this sun energy that's coming this way is less. So your DNA is getting less illuminated, less vibration, less rhythm. And because of that, your age, the age go from Noah age down to 120 years. Notice what it say. It say God say he's going to reduce the age to 120. What it is, it's a science to it. The science is that when they come in here, that's 120. This is 120. When it comes to that, giving you an example. When you get here and uh, Sirius is oh, in this area, you go, some say 70 to 80 years. That's why some say that. 70 to 80 years. Now, when you go on around here in the Pisces time, man go back to 120 years, up to at least 120 years. Some people have lived, 100, I know a lady lived 105 years. She told me when she was 80 something years, she had to get an operation. She said, I may not live, I may not. I said, gosh, all that. I said, you're going to get a hundred, at least 105. She lived to be 105 years old. And this lady, she was like real smart. She was a seal for the United States government. People don't like me talking about that very much. But yeah, she was a seal. This government had people like that, okay, that could see things. She pulled me in, brought me in to her environment to see what I knew and to disperse that knowledge in letters to Washington, etc. I really didn't like doing that, but at the same time, I wanted them to leave me alone, don't bother me. So when me and her talking, she said, well, what you see? I said, well, I see Bush having the second term. When uh, Russell Simmons was saying, get him out of the White House. Not that I love Bush or uh, so much good about Bush, but I see some things in the mythology wasn't so shiny about Bush.
But yet, I had to tell the truth of what I did see. He will have a second turn. And I talked about that, and I wrote it in a letter. And it's in that book. It's in this book right here. So I don't. I, when I do stuff, I put it in stuff. It was in this book right here. Also, she asked me, well, what about Jeff Bush? I say, I don't, I don't see him becoming president no time soon. I, I really don't see that. And uh, the way that I wrote it in that first letter, I said, well, and so President Bush, da 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 She said, uh-uh, you can't write no letter like that. You write a letter like that, that president could send somebody down here to break your leg. He's a Your Excellency. I was like, whatever. And then I went and studied about a Your Excellency, and I found out that all presidents are Your Excellencies. That Washington was a Your Excellency, but Washington didn't want them to call him a Your Excellency. So when you get in this certain environment, it's a lot of knowledge you start learning about these people that you normally don't focus on in your local uh, uh, environment and your school system and all that, the significance of that. It's very important to know that. But in this, you got to know how this works because it's science, people. It's science. God is the greatest scientist ever lived. And it's levels. It's like the sun and the moon work. It's like when the moon work, the moon the, the lasers at certain times, full moon, some, some on a different time. But you always see them dealing with that cycle thing. Okay? Uh, you see the moon at certain times when the moon works a certain way, you see the tides are higher or the tides are lower. So it's a science to our life here on earth. We one with this universe. We one with this earth. We beat with the beat of the heartbeat of this earth. And we got to understand these things. God have already incorporated. God have already incorporated for this type of energy, this son of man energy, to come at our particular time. That's why we're having a reset. Things have to change. Why? Because we're going from regular language into the telepathic environment. That means we're going to be able to open the Acacia record. That means certain knowledge is going to come readily to certain individuals. And you're going to see all of this. And this is going to occur at our time. The time we're moving in. This stuff has to be taught. So you can't literally teach that kind of stuff by just reading this book. No, no, no. That's why I give credit to people like T.D. Jackson and the rest of them. They done took us all. They took us over this way to here. They have taken us here. They have taken us here. Now it's time. It's like Moses. I didn't use the term Moses, although it's some correction that I can teach you about Moses. But it's like the story of Moses. Moses took him so far, then Joshua had to take him on into the promised land. You see what I'm saying? You are to be educated, knowledgeable in the arts and how this work with our consciousness, how this work with our life. It's very important. You need to know the cause of why, why? Why did the age drop from seven to eight? You need to know that because Sirius was here. That's the furthest part from us. And we was here. That's why it was seven to eight years. Why did it drop down to 120 years? Because after Noah's time, Sirius was here. Sirius was here and we here. So it dropped down. Wham, a big drop to 120 years. We need to know this stuff. When it got over here, why did it raise from 70 to 80 back to 120? Because Sirius was here and it went there. Why are we going into to live a uh, thousand years? Because Sirius is here now and we here. Just like the Noah time. As above, as above, so below. As below, so above. And you need to know this stuff, people. This is an age that we have to go into the higher level of knowledge. And why does it say that? Look at Daniel what it said. And Daniel wanted to know when these things happen. He said, at the end of time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. When that happened? That happened here, my people. That happened here. How could you run to and fro? You can only run to and fro unless you got what? The transportation to go to and fro. What did they have before they got in this area? They had all in a horse and buggy. Horse and buggy. They're riding a the horse and buggy. But when they got in here, what it is? The car, horseless carriage. And, and they had the debate there because, see, them horse and buggies, they had what you call a Cadillac carriage and all that. And them people, they want to drop that industry. They wanted it. So the people like Ford and et cetera had to get in a campaign, a, a, a salesman campaign, in order to tell them, look, that same luxury you got in there, we put it in a car. Them same tires you got, uh, 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 Firestone, we put it on the wheel. 
and all this stuff. And they got that campaign going and boo, they start seeing how much money they could make if they go on and, and, and try this new invention. And that's how they came in there. So everything ain't just gonna fall in place. God has to send individuals to get these things placed in place. And all that is a part of it because it's the arts. It's the arts. And you got to understand the arts. And you know that. Now, this stuff is very important. Now, we got to deal in, in one of the most important things at our time. One of the most important things at our time, and that is the manifest destiny. We need to know what that is. The manifest destiny is simply the five divine laws. You have to walk in God five divine laws and the manifest destiny engulf these five divine laws. They never told you what the manifest destiny is, but they got you got to understand this. We as Christians, if black folks or other individuals, especially a uh, uh, black, uh, I wouldn't call them Negroes in America, originals of America, if you're going to ever come out of this condition you're in, you must, you must follow your own, not something that somebody else put together now, because all of it, if you follow it yourself, you're going to follow the same thing they follow anyway. You're going to follow the five divine laws of God. You must follow this for yourself, the manifest destiny. You cannot get out of it. You cannot get out. I don't care what leader come on this planet trying to get you out of the condition you're in. If he do not apply you to the manifest destiny, which is the five divine law, he's wasting your time and he's wasting his time. Okay? That is the cross. That is what the cross really means. They lied to you. They lied to you. This is what the cross is all about. Notice what Jesus said. That's why you got to do your research. Jesus said this. The, the initiate said Jesus said. You always got to understand these books and these writings were written by initiate. The initiate said Jesus said this. I want you to pay this close attention. If any man that's male and female follow after me, he must or she must deny themselves. This is in scripture now. He must deny, deny themselves. Okay? You got to understand that. To deny yourself what it's all about and follow me. Now, when you look at this, it is the manifest destiny. But they never told you that. It is the fine divine law. What is this? What is this cross is all about? What is this punk is all about? What is this manifest destiny is all about? Morally, morally, your head part, morally. You are known to look up to God. So you got to put your God in your head. Nobody else God. Nobody else God. You got to put your God in your head. You got to find out who your God is, how your God is, is directing you and the understanding of your God and you need that. Okay? That's morals. What do it say? Where did it come from? In the beginning, God blessed man. That's what it's all about. More. Then God said to man from the voice of God. This wasn't from what they call the voice of a prophet. God said, be fruitful. What is fruitful? Economics. That's why they tell you to put your shoes on. When you're going to work, put your shoes on. Everything economically comes from where? The earth. Your car comes from the earth. Your shoes come from the earth. Your dress comes from the earth. Your food comes from the earth. There is nothing in your mind, in your thought, that you use economically that do not come from the earth. Your oxygen comes from the earth. It comes from the, the trees, the plants, and it disperses out into the air. Okay? Those are two parts of the cross. They are two parts of the manifest destiny. You got to control. You got to control your economics. You can't let somebody else control it because if you let somebody else control your economics, they are your rulers. They become your rulers. Okay? And you got to keep that in mind. That's why Black folks having a hard time in America to be able to readjust and do the things that they need to be. Because they got to understand how the Wall Street, the Black Wall Streets came about. They took on, without them knowing it, their own manifest destiny. And they didn't even know it. God just blessed them to do it. But yet later, the U.S. Central came and destroyed, bombed the place, Tulsa and all that. But yet they did. And you got to go back to that. African American, Black American, Native American, you got to go back to that. What is the other part? The other part is what he said: multiply. What is that? That's one. Your your right hand, your left hand, multiply. That's sociology. 
That's part of your manifest destiny, my people. Sociology. You got to control your own neighborhood. You got to control your own social environment. This is what carrying the cross is all about. Don't let now devil tell you differently. This is what it's really all about. Then what he say? So do. That's political. You hold your right hand in the court of law, right? You pledge allegiance to the flag with your right hand, right? You salute with your right hand, right? See, they got it in your culture. And they put bringing that energy toward them and their cause. But they're not letting you know what it's all about. Okay? And then what is the fourth one? Diet and appetite. What did God tell man? He told him what to eat. He told him a vegetarian diet. A diet to deal with uh, uh, electrolyte foods. Uh, 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 a, a diet that deal with certain things when you get into a certain juices and stuff from naturally from from your your grapes or your uh, your oranges or your fruits and stuff like that, and you get that alkaline, that high alkaline content, and that, that's what God wants you to be a part of, my people. That's what He wants you to be a part of. Now I want you to see something because it's very important what I'm trying to say to you. Look at put a circle around you, okay. Those five areas. There is not one second, not a fraction of a second of your entire life from the cradle to the grave. Listen to what I'm saying now because you got to know this one. There's not one second of your life from the cradle to the grave that you are zipped from those five divine laws or those five divine areas of that that what we call was known as manifest destiny. You're not exempt from that. Now, if you're not taught this knowledge, if they don't give you this knowledge, whoever control this over you, they are your masters and you are their servants, which are slaves. Prove me wrong. That's what I got to say. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Let's look at our government. Who controlled the banking system? The government have allocated it out to what? Uh, uh, the Federal Reserve. Okay. The Federal Reserve dictates how much money and the banks are there. Even the bank can tell you who they use their money to. Okay. So you got to blame the banks for part of uh, this racist stuff happening to your life. Okay. So don't, don't eliminate the financial institutions, okay? Who control your communities? Who control this part? Who control your community? You don't make no community. They form your community. They tell you what you can do in your community and through the laws and what you can do in your community and what you cannot do in your community, okay? Let's look at it now. Who tell you about God? Who gave you Jesus, okay? That Jesus. That graven image. Who gave you Jesus? I don't care how many sisters out there jumping and shouting, talking about they know Jesus. God know you and your heart. And through God knowing you and your heart, although you saying Jesus, he know what your heart really means. And by that, you got that connection. And no other way you got that connection because truth didn't give you that. That system gave you that. That man, that Jesus. And they knew what they gave you. They knew that was a cold name. But they didn't tell you. That's part of keeping you in darkness. That's part of ruling over you. Okay? Who dictate to you what you eat? What grocery stores you go to? Who run the farming system? And all that. So you tell me the Eurocentric system, and it's not about black folks alone, it's about Eurocentric peoples too. I'm not including black folks alone because this tell you about the Gentiles in here too. How you ought to be a light to the Gentiles. You ought to be a light to your centric peoples as well. So I can't come and tell you, oh, black folks this and white. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. This is happening to everybody in America. Everybody in America. And you got to see that now. But you, as a people of color, got a responsibility. And your responsibility is to resurrect your people. And once you resurrect your people, you can resurrect the world. And this is something you got to do. Because your centric peoples 
is not going to come against a Eurocentric system to that large scale, okay? But you, a native of America, uh, one that have been brought here from the continent of Africa, uh, or brought here from the islands and et cetera, you, you could, and you are known as a black people, which is, is not such a thing as a black people, but known as that, you have an opportunity to come among yourself together in unity and integrity to help change the world. God laid that in your hand, my people. He laid it in your hand. And you need to know what the scripture really is saying. He laid it in your hand. He yeah, put that ball in your hand. What you gonna do with it? Run it back. What you gonna do with a quarterback? What you gonna do with a receiver? What you gonna do with this whole thing? God's tackles, sinners, and all this other stuff. What you gonna do with it? You gonna do your job? You gonna do your job? Or you gonna let this teaching go by and God has to curse America? It's in your hand now. It's in your hand. Manifest destiny is something that you need to be pushing. You need to push this. This is the five divine laws. This is what's going to bring this world back in the path in which God wanted in this age. You got to. You got to understand your manifest destiny which is the five divine laws. You can't let somebody else run this nation like you have before and you're living in this nation. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is not a black against a white thing. This is not at all. Or some white folks going to be right there with you. Or they're going to understand that this is the will of God. And that's what's going to make you a light to you centric people. A light to the Gentiles. You need to know. Let's deal with Isaiah 19, 19 to 21. In thought day, that's the way we're at now. This is this transition. Thought has to come and bring forth this transition from set, set to Horus. And you got to understand this. In thought day, this is thought is the one that God had put in line to, to govern this kind of stuff. And no, okay, he's known as the nether of the nethers. He's known in the Bible as the Lord God. And you got to see that. Now you got to understand how thought the God Allah, which is the angelic name for what we call the source, the God Allah form thought, form majesty to do to be a mediator between Him and ourselves. Okay, and that's what thought job is to do to make sure this is. All smooth and go the way that God chooses for it to be. That's thought job. And we he's a, known as a brother. He's come as two. Just like we come as two. We have two. Two people. We are made out of two people. We got the physical man and we got the spiritual man. Thought has a physical man. He was formed in the spiritual man. He just wasn't formed like we was. We come through the womb. Okay. Thought didn't come through the womb like that because thought could, could go in and out of dimensions. We can't do that right now. And he could go in and out of dimensions. He could come and choose when he chooses to. And he could present himself to you when he chooses to. Okay. And we have to see that. Okay. Isaiah 19, 19 to 21. And in thought day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Now you've got to see this in Sod now, twofold. An altar in, of the Lord in the land of Egypt, which is short, the pyramid of Shorts, that's one, okay? And also, it shows you the land of Egypt in America, Cross Rock Incorporated, the altar of the Lord. God have put this together. We are here in front of you, okay? But we still have to recognize the one in Egypt because I had to go to the one in Egypt to do a prayer ritual to confirm the who I am. So God could put that energy that have been placed in the pyramid on my life. And at that night when I went to sleep, when I, uh, the night that night, I think I, I didn't, I didn't stay on the Gaza Strip. The first night I stayed on the Gaza Strip. The next night I said, no, I'm going to a hotel 
close to the airport where the rest of the America normally stand. Okay, not that I was afraid of anything. I just thought it was convenient to do that. Okay, and at night when I was there, at, at that night, God revealed to me the purpose of going into the king, king chamber and bowing in the center of the king chamber where the Corfu really was positioned at before they moved it to the side. And in that, he showed me unity with equality, me unity with integrity, and showed me how to see the difference of chaos and norm. There's some stuff that that pyramid have that that, that it, it don't scientifically our mind cannot conceive unless we've been attracted to that environment by thought and by God Almighty. And we have to understand that. So sometimes I may say something, you may not quite understand it. But through time, I will break it down. When I talked about uh, Solomon reign, I broke part of that down. If you really go back and look at it, you need to see that. Okay. In the midst of the land of Egypt, okay, which is America and ancient Egypt, okay, you got to see both. And a pillar at the boundless thereof, okay. And it shall be for a sign. Sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. Would show you that pyramid chronicle our time. And when you get to the king's chamber, when you go into the entrance of the king's chamber from the way that the individuals like Smith, Davis, and some of the other scholars have back in the day in the 1800s and in the 1900s, I mean 1800s and stuff like that. And uh, they chronicle time and they show you exactly when you get to the king chamber, it's at the age around 1953, uh, 1954. 1954 is the birth of that particular person that is to be known as that Messiah, the prince of that coming king, okay? Which is the same as my birth, okay? And uh, it's a lot you, you will learn through time about that and you need to pick up some books and study about that so you can see and understand what it's really about. It's a, a chronicle, a chronology of time. That's what it also shows and many other things. It have encoded in it the golden ratio. The golden ratio. And you need to see all that stuff. Now, okay, and it's a, let, let's go a little further. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior. Who is the savior? Thought. The Bible tells you that thought is the savior. Okay? And a great one. Who is the great one? The messenger. And a great one. His job is to come and teach you of a truthism where God is leading you to. Freeing Jacob. Freeing Israel. Freeing uh, uh uh, uh, God's chosen people. And this is where this time is at, right in here. This is the time right there. And this is uh, where 1954 is here, the birth of the Messiah, the Prince. And Daniel tell you, 1954, how did it show you in Daniel? In Daniel, it tell you seven weeks of 360 days a year, which seven weeks is really seven years of 360 days a year because he had not come out of the womb from 19... Uh, 1947, the, uh, November 29, 1947, it tell you the coming of this particular person they call the Great One. It tell you about that coming of that person in there. It's in Scripture, my people. You got to know how to interpret the Scripture so you can see the truth is going to go with that. And it tell you when he's going to come forth. So 1954 and, to, and he supposed to come forth in 2016, exactly when this organization, Cross Rock Incorporated, came forth to God's chosen people. And we have to see this. Now, this is very important to know. You need to know all of this as well so as this here. Although I didn't walk on this lecture to be long, but I have to show you certain things in the arts and things that you need to know at this particular time of history because we finna go to a whole nother level this year with this. And I don't want to leave nobody behind. I want everybody to be able to look at this, study it, and go to that next level. Isaiah 19, 20 to 21, the messenger. Talking about the messenger. 
and he shall deliver them and the Lord shall be known to Egypt, which is America. Who's going to be known to America? Thought is going to be known to America. Thought is going to be known to America. Who else is going to be known to America to be in the Bible? Allah is going to be known to America to be in the Bible. When you see hollow be thy name, you look at the word hollow and you get Allah. And people don't know that. Why would it say holla be that name? Holla ain't no name. Why? Because it's trying to initiate trying to point you to something. And when you go into that word holla, you could get Allah out of holla. You got to know how to take these letters and put them in the right place so you can see what God really said. There's no such thing as God is holla. It's a name inside that. Allah be thy name. And you have to see that. See, Christians don't see Allah. And use the word Allah. They use the word Jehovah. They use Jehovah Jireh. They use Elohim. They use a lot of different words. But you got to remember the J's ain't come out to the 1400s. So there wasn't no Jehovah nothing. Okay? Allah be thy name. I don't care whether the Muslims have adopted that name unto them as their God. They're children of God like everybody else. Why not? Well, they got a right to use it. But by them trying to deter or take you away from the truthism, they prefer not using that word Allah. Okay, although in the sacred orders they do, the uh, uh, the shrines and the, and the Masonic order and all of them, which is part of the same, and some of the other, they use it. But see, they don't tell you because a lot of lies been taught to you, a lot of trickery in the age of Pisces, a lot of deception, and you got to move beyond that and see what God is really trying to say. You. Shall and it say, and he shall deliver them, and the Lord shall be known to Egypt, which is America, the modern day Egypt, shall be known to America, and the Americans shall know, which the Egyptians, the Americans shall know the Lord in thought day. So you're gonna understand this. You're gonna understand Allah properly. You're gonna understand thought, which is Machesdic properly, in thought day, in Machesdic day, which is not. And shall do sacrifices and oblations. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. What do they mean by sacrifices and oblations? Does this mean is they going to be slaughtering animals? No, 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 no. You is going to make the sacrifices. Okay? You're going to make the sacrifices when you obey these five divine laws. You're going to eat properly. Okay? You're going to eat properly. You're going to talk properly. You're going to think properly. You're going to make this new, this newness of yourself. Okay? You're not going to be talking about and criticizing everybody. You're going to understand that this is a planet where God shaped gods. Okay? And everybody got a bit of God inside them. Okay? And you're going to realize that. That means that you're going to make certain sacrifices where when you used to do this way, that you do it this way. You're going to respect people more. You're going to be the sacrifice because you're going to take a lot of old habits and put new habits in there. And you got to see this and understand this uh, and move forward. In it. Genesis 15, 13 to 15. And the Lord said unto Abraham, now we got to understand this then, because it's, it's the arts need to be there to have a clear understanding of that. And the Lord said unto Abraham, know for a surety thought. Know for a surety thought. So what that is placing you at this time. Okay, the initial is placing you at this time. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Know for a surety thought, thy seed shall be a stranger in the land. Thought is not theirs. Okay, thought has been kept out of you knowing about him. He's in the book, but he's not here. He's here, but he ain't here. Okay, I said like this. Here. He's in the book, but he ain't here. Okay, you don't know that he's there. Okay, they have hidden it from you. So you got to understand what it's trying to say. Okay? Thought is not there. You don't know about thought. It was when when you, this organization came forth, because this is the responsibility of the messenger to bring forth thought, then to the general public, to God's chosen people, then you start hearing about thought. Before now, you didn't know thought was there. Who is Machesedek? Don't get it confused. Thought and Machesedek is the same person. Okay? They just took the, the uh, uh, they wouldn't put Machesedek this, Machesedek that. They wouldn't say that because that's the name of the priesthood. They just say that instead of thought, okay? And that's what got you way off in left field, okay? Thought is not there. 
and shall serve them. That means you're going to serve the, the uh, Americans, uh, uh, this nation that brought forth the manifest destiny, who brought forth it from the doctrine of discovery from the Catholic Church. You got to remember the Lutherans and the Catholic, they was all one. Lutheran was not a Lutheran priest. He was a Catholic priest who rebelled against this, the way that the Catholic Church was running things. So in reality, you may think you're a Protestant in which you are through time, but you're still part linked with the Catholic agenda. And you got to see that because you took on the manifest destiny. You took on the, uh, the uh, doctrine of discovery and you created it in the knowledge of the manifest destiny, which is the same thing. So you ran with it. Okay, you ran with the Catholic agenda. Okay, because you didn't incorporate all the peoples in it and teach all the peoples. You just do what the Catholics did. They took the Eurocentric people so they could know it and, and override all the other people called all, all, all the other people's heathen. And you did the same thing in the manifest destiny, which is the same thing. You got to understand, we have to correct that. We got to correct that. And this is the thing that we have to understand. We have to make that correction. Okay. What do it say? Okay. And shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. Okay. What is this 400 years? Is that about back then before what they call Jesus time back then BC? No. See, because when you use the arts to this, this 400 years, this stuff got to fit with the arts. And if it don't fit with the arts, which it cannot fit back in the time past, because I done did it over and over again, and I know what I'm talking about, and you could do it yourself. And you could see that. There was no Jews back there at that time that went through affliction in Egypt. That is a made-up, I'm going to say, story. See, I like Jewish people. Because they bring a lot of truth to the table. So I'm not going to sit there and beat on no Jewish people. Especially Jewish people alive today. They didn't know. This thing was a whole manipulation in the age of Pisces. So they did not know. So why are you going to just sit there and tell them, y'all did this. Y'all had this. Y'all was the wrong people. Y'all know what you are. Oh, no, no, no. Some of these people are not even aware. Some of these people that call themselves Jews are not even aware of the of some of the things that happened back then. They don't know some of the history just like you don't know some of the history. So you got to understand that we have a time where we got to be a light to everybody. The Jews and the Gentiles, the, uh, all of them, we got to be a light people. And we got to be able to do this thing the right way. So we got to change our attitude. We got to start doing more research and knowledge and knowing these truthisms. It's extremely important to know these truthisms. Okay, now, what did it say after them? For 400 years, okay? And say, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Okay, that means a judgment is going to happen. When is that judgment going to happen? After the 400 years. Okay, so we look at these 400 years. Let's look at it. Okay, the judgment. And after, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Manifest destiny. People don't know that. They look at, oh, money, you need to pay me reparation, all that. Yes, they need to pay some, but it's bigger than that. It's the great substance that you coming out with manifest destiny. Because you're going back to find out what this manifest destiny is all about. And you're going to find out this manifest destiny is to find divine laws and what you're supposed to be doing. And you're going to listen to the voice of God because the voice of God is in the manifest destiny when you go see it in the scripture. There's nothing more powerful on this planet right now than the manifest destiny. If you want to deliver your people, you need to know this. The manifest destiny. What do the manifest destiny do that make it so powerful? The manifest destiny gets you to know thought, to know who your God is. That's what the manifest destiny do. To understand the morality of things. That's what the manifest destiny do. What does the manifest destiny do? The manifest destiny teach you and show you that to serve God, you got to be in your own economy. You got to have your own money. You got to create your own business. Banking institution, financial institution, insurance institution, all those institutions, you got to create them. You cannot let the Eurocentric man dominate this area. If you're following the will of God, I love this one. See, this is a truth that you've never been taught. See, you're not going to learn this from T.D. Jakes. He's going to bring you so far, they could go down some other, they're going to bring you so far, but it's for the messenger to take you to that next level. They can tell you some good stuff because I listen to them myself. I like TDJs. I like Clip on Dollar. 
I like these people. What time I used to try to beat up on them. I don't know. God let me know. Bang up. They was in the age of deception. You are in this new age, Lewis, and you got to do your job like they were doing their job. Although they may still be on the scene, you got to bring and elevate your job now. And tell my people how to be delivered. How to come out of this condition. You ain't going to come out of it, my people, unless you understand it. You can't. You can't, my people. I have a love for you. And if you want to get out of this condition, if you want to understand what Black Wall Street was all about, you must understand the manifest destiny. There is no other way. You got to take control of those five areas of your life because that's where your life is at on this planet as living as a human being. You must. The inner you, the God part of you must attach to this, the laws of God. To resurrect yourself and your people. And I guarantee you, if you do it, the black community will change overnight, my people. If you show the banking system, look, we want our own banks now, too. We'll use yours until we can do what we need to do, but we want our own banks now. We want our own financial institutions. We want to build some community things. We want to build some business things that we could be able to do. I know we've been going to your malls and going to this stuff, but it's our time now. It's our time. Do what you're supposed to do. We talk about the five states to move in. What would you say in there? What would you do about that? Would you wait till the government get you? No, 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 no. Manifest destiny. You don't wait on anything. You find an area and you talk your peoples into moving that area. These so-called brothers, and I'm not going to beat down on them, that are billionaires and stuff like that. They need to help build Wall Street towns and stuff that you could come to and build. And you need the brothers and sisters with this high education, this high money, uh, capital that they have to start the ball to rolling. You don't need to bring the poor of the poor in there and try to make something happen only when you need them to get a job. But you need to bring your, uh, as they say, you need to bring Judah front and center now in the manifest destiny. This is our survival right here. This is where we're going to get our respect for other races and people right here, my people. God, then let me know this is an important revelation and I'm not backing down. You got to understand that because this engulfed your whole life. This is what the cross is really about, carrying the cross. There is not about no man, you the one on that cross that they say Jesus was talking about. That thing is all about you. All about the God man, the God woman in you. And you got to understand the Christ in you. And you got to resurrect him. God want to resurrect all of us. And you got to know how you need to be resurrected. You're going to be resurrected in this. Because the more the understanding of God is in this. You're going to be wrecked financially because the economics Resurrection is in this. You're going to be resurrected socially because the social resurrection for our community is in this. You're going to be um, uh, uh, resurrected politically because the political resurrection is in this. And you're going to be able to eat healthy and live longevity because that resurrection for that is in this. Prove me wrong. I know what I'm talking about. Exodus 12.40 Deal with it now. Exodus 12, 40. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who dwell in Egypt, which is America, was 430 years. Now, both people have been going with 400 years. But you got to read everything the Bible says. You take one verse, you read everything. What it say? This 400 years is bringing you to the point where you need to understand the manifest destiny. This 430 years is bringing you out where you're using the manifest destiny to come out of the condition you have been placed in. That's what it's all about. Okay? Now, the sojourn of the children of Israel who dwell in Egypt, America, was 430 years. 
What is that all about? What is that saying? On August, if you look at it, August the 1st, right? August 1st, 1619, they made a law on tobacco in the assembly in Virginia to establish a nation here. They made a law, and that law was on tobacco and how they're going to treat indentured slash slave servants, okay, for punishment. That's deal with the affliction that they talk about in, uh, in, in Genesis, okay? The affliction. You see, they talk about in Genesis. Okay, not only they afflict you by physical uh, punishment, but by keeping you from being in a certain thing. Because that's when you first heard the term used in America, right after that, doing the Nathan, Nathan Bacon thing, called white people. You didn't hear that nowhere before then until around that time, right after that time, during the time of Nathan Bacon. It was no people called white people before. Okay, and that white people thing have came into our society and have put one group ahead of the other group. I don't care where you come from in the world. They call you white folks. You could be the uh, dog, dog skin black person. They will tell you sign as white folks. Okay, white people. Okay, white. So you got to understand how they wield that that deception on you. And okay, you need to see that now. In this, you need to see this because what's happening, August the 1st, 1619. Now, I know many people have said, and I want y'all to pay this attention now because I have to talk about this. Many people have said, well, the slaves, they came over before uh, 1619 and they did this and they did that. And I'm not, I'm not. Read and study the scripture very carefully. It is not talking about slaves coming over from America. It's talking about a nation. It didn't say nations. It said, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. I got to tell you this because you got to see this now. This Bible was sent here. That nation that this Bible was sent to is America. Not South America, but North America, Turtle Island. This is the nation that this Bible is talking about. So you cannot count them slaves in this part because this got to fit with the arts. When I do the golden ratio with the arts, it hit hand hand. Prove me wrong. See, I know how to work the arts. Thought been here with me to teach me how to work the arts. So I know what I'm doing. Bring the scholars. Prove me wrong. Because I have scholars already around me. And they be amazed. So you bring your scholars. To try to prove me wrong. Because I know what I'm talking about my people. And I'm not saying this. Trying to say it in a bad way. I'm just saying I come to do my job. Not to figure out my job. I come to do my job. So when I get in front of you, I already done figured out what I need to say. And how I need to say it. And how I need to present it. Okay? So I'm not coming here for somebody to teach me. I come to teach you what does say the Lord. Okay? And that's what it is when I'm in front of this audience. That's, that's my job. Okay? So I ain't going to talk about something I don't know on this board. I'm only going to talk about the stuff that I do know. I'm not going to talk about how you need to fine-tune the engine. I'm not going to talk about how you need to take and change a Tesla battery. That's not my job. My job is to tell you and teach you what does say the Lord out of his book and out of the arts. And that's my job. Okay. Now, what you need to say, in 1619, the assembly came together, and what it did it was uh, the 400 years is 144,000 days. You got to understand the arts. That's the completion of that circle, 144,000 days. That's why you see it in Revelation where they talk about 144,000 and then talk about a number that no man can number. It's not talking about people. It's talking about a circumference of time and the people's inside that circumference of time. Because you're gonna, they done spent that will for 400 years and they're going to spend it. This will going to be spent again for another 400 years. But you better make sure you the one have spent in this will this next time. You need to know that. And that will is at the time of the possession. The new will is at that time of the possession of the equinox. And, and you need to know that at that paradigm shift. 
You need to be front and center and spinning this next wheel for this next 400 years. You need to know that. Now, what do we have? We have 144,000 days. You take that 144,000 days from 1619. If you do the calculation and you draw your chart up, you'll see. Because some days got 165 and some got 166 days in a year. And you got to know all that because you got to do the conversion. So of 144,000 days, you do the conversion, it's going to take you to October 30, 2013. Why is that important? Because there's revelations in Daniel that deal with numbers that you're going to need to know this particular date. You're going to need to know this number to be able to crack those uh, revelations. Okay, you need to know that. What do we have after then? We have uh, 30, 30 years. Okay, what's the 30 years? The 30 years is 10,800 days. 10,800 days. Take us to add that to it, take us to 2043. That's gonna be a celebration day. I didn't give the exact date, I just gave the year. That's gonna be a celebration year at that time of you coming out of condition because you're gonna understand the manifest destiny, you're gonna walk in the manifest destiny, and you're gonna live the manifest destiny, and you're gonna build those Wall Streets and build those other environments that you need. You're gonna build yourself as a nation of people. And this is to uh, people, African Americans, uh, uh, a Native American who uh, uh, are, are what they call blacks and etc. And other peoples who are going to attach to this movement. They're going to build themselves as the people of God. It's going to be a movement, a great movement going to occur in these next years to come. And we have to see this. we got to understand this. This is part of God's perfect will for our nation, our planet. So we got to see all that. And what we got, the range of 2043. Now what is, what we need to see from 2013 to 2022, a particular thing supposed to happen in 2022, and to 2043. Now, between 2012, 2016, and 2026 is a zeitgeist of time. It's a zeitgeist of time. It's the soul of all this, this whole shift, the soul of this time. We're living in a particular time of human history. This is a time when a judgment is going on. This is time when America got to open the eyes. You got COVID. Before you had COVID, you had economic uh, slides and all that. You had that economic condition. You, get, you got a time that you got to focus in on now. You got to focus in on now because you're at 2022 20, right now. And there's some events that's going to happen that's going to shape the future of our nation right in this time. And we had 2020, 2022, and, and between 22 and 2026 is a very important time. But yet we have to keep on going to 2043. And this is a judgment that's going to happen this time. So if you're looking for things to get better, please. Things are going to get better, like he said, a great and a dreadful day. Things are going to get better for God's chosen people because they're going to know what to do at that time. They're going to know how to adjust themselves. So it's going to be a great time for them to be able to overcome any obstacles. But it's going to be a dreadful time for them ones that don't know the truthism. Don't know the truthism. So it's going to be a great and a dreadful time that you have to understand. And you got to see it as though the story of Moses. Remember the story of Moses? How Moses told them what to do. And by them doing what Moses said, they escaped a lot of the danger and the events that are going to happen that we have it on their personal life and etc. Well, this is the same kind of time. This is the same kind of time. That time actually mirroring what this time is all about. And you need to know that because that time didn't actually happen. It is this time we're living in. But most people they ain't going to break that down and tell you the truth. They're going to try to stick with the myth. Stick with that. Like that. The literal writing. And I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to tell you these truths. Now, we're going to stop right here. But I want you to pay attention to this because this year, 2022 is a year that you're going to learn how to use the arts properly. You're going to learn how to use the calculation. I don't want you to just hear me talk. I want you to go into these calculations. Work them out for yourself. When I deal with the spot and stuff like that, I want you to take your own name and work it out. When I do these things, but don't look, when you, when you see these spots, I want you to understand things about the spot. When I show you Barack Obama, Donald Trump spot, Biden spot, don't look at your life as like their life, okay? Look at the little subtle things, how God have, have done things for you, have blessed you. 
and things like that. I know when I showed this spot to one gentleman, he worked with the city and he had a, a real good job in, in, in dealing with the water treatment and all this other stuff. And he said, you know what? He said, man, that spot is real. I said, oh, you went home and worked it? He said, yeah, I worked it. I always wondered, he said, I always wondered, I took this exam and I don't know how I passed that exam. I don't know how I passed that exam. And I took that exam, hoping that God was with me and helped me. And you know, I scored one of the highest schools there. And I had that job and I done had that job ever since. And I retired on that job, off that job last year. And when I did those spots, it showed me that job. It showed me that time. And I couldn't connect God with my life at that time. And some of the other spots, this thing is real. And this is what people's got to see. Don't try to look at your life as being this big thing like Barack Obama, or this big thing like Trump, or this big thing like Biden, or some of the others. See it as it is. Because when you know how this spark works and you don't know how to connect with other sparks, then you can see your life flourish. Even at this time, you can see your life flourish. Even before you have your spark or after you have had spark, you can see your life flourish. Because we have to be one. We have to unify ourselves. We have to unify ourselves. And we got to understand that. Now, it's the end of this lecture. I didn't want to go long, but sometimes it's very difficult not to. So Corinthia always say, well, let the anointing lead you. And sometimes it takes me a little longer. But we need you to make donations. And first of all, this year, I want to say it over and over and over again. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. We need that now. But make your donation. And help us so we could get our land. Help us so we could make this thing work. Help us so we could push this manifest destiny. Okay? Make your donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Uh, Cross Rock Incorporated. You could go to that same address, 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Uh, with Cross Rock, many other individuals making their donations Give LaFi and PayPal. You could go to Give LaFi on your mobile app on the charitable and you can make your donation to Cross Rock Incorporated. Or you could go to PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Or you could go to Cash App and you see the dollar sign SWAU1954. That's the dollar sign SWAU1954. And I'd like to say a prayer right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for a new year. Thank you for this audience. Father, this year, keep them healthy. Keep them healthy, Heavenly Father. Keep them healthy. Keep their minds clear that they can feel good about what God is doing and they can feel that God is protecting them. No matter what they say, uh, third, fourth shot and all this other stuff, God, you protect them. Those individuals have taken the shot. God put a special anointing, a special energy, a special vibration in their life. Because sometimes that pressure be there and they, they don't want to lose their job. And they want to do this and that. Please help them, Father. Please help them, Father. Please help them. Because sometimes they're, they're making their decisions only for themselves. And they got to do the best that they can. So be with them. Those ones that haven't taken a shot and know that they've got some running room until something occurs, keep them safe as well, Father. We for all our people now. Keep them well, Father, because you know how each and every individual has to be dealt with, okay? And I'm going to say this, Father. I'm going to say this to y'all. I was at the Bobby shop, and uh, I seen one guy that I knew and he was like he had sneakers on he always be jumping around talking and all this good guy career guy see when you get in the barbershop you get a little loose and I want to I'm gonna submit this brand but I want to tell you all this and one day I went in the barbershop and he had a walker 
And he came in there with his walker and his support help was with him. And after he left, I asked Brother Justin, what happened to this brother? And he said, he came after he got the COVID shot. Then, just last week, I'm visiting the barbershop again. Another brother. And I'm telling you this not to deter you from a shot or nothing like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you need to be prayerful now in what you do and these decisions that you make. Another brother, he came in a wheelchair. Parallel. I asked his wife. I asked his wife. I said, uh, you know, what did it did in COVID or anything have an effect? She said, we don't know. It came after he had, it came weeks after he had the COVID shot. And he been like that ever since. Now, you cannot say the COVID shot did that. Okay? So, they telling you certain parts on this news, but they not telling you everything. And I'm not here trying to come back against what the government wants you to believe. I'm just telling you, let God be with you. Let God guide you in these decisions and what you do. And you do what's right. Brother Armstrong is not gonna stand in the way of that. And stick myself in that position when I know that they don't want that to happen. I wanna be on this air with you for a while. But I want you to get God in your life if you don't have him. Pray, be prayerful in God so you can make these right decisions and stay with this ministry so we can inform you of the things that you need to understand. Heavenly Father, bless you people. Bless them. I know you love me, but you teach me how to really love your people. All cause. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and time. And I say this in the name of the Lord God, the Father, and the source of love. And your message. I'm as Hermes, Mercury, Quetzalcoatl, Kula Khan, Tukuman. We are telling them once, rise of the children of Israel, Lewis that is, beat.